it's time. I'm finally going to read The Lord of the Rings for the first time. I am such a big Lord of the Rings fan. I have mentioned it far and wide for so many years that Lord of the Rings is the series that got me into fantastical worlds and a world of fiction. As a kid, my mom and aunts took us to see the Lord of the Rings movies in theater. I was way too young to see those movies, but they really altered my brain and just introduced me into an alternate reality where there are elves and hobbits and orcs and goblins. It introduced me to fantasy and how much I adore watching fantasy shows and movies and it really just made me love escaping our reality into another world. While I don't have any photos to show you because I can't seem to find them, my cousins and I actually dressed up to go watch The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King in theater. My brother was dressed up as Frodo and we actually plastic wrapped his plastic sword. So it was blue and it reminded him of Sting. And I dressed up as Galadriel. One cousin dressed up as Arwen. Another cousin dressed up as Sam. And it was just such a collection collective and wonderful experience between me and my family and we will never forget that like we are infinitely tied by the Lord of the Rings and it's crazy that I've never actually read it. I have gone 20 years because I initially saw them when I was around five years old and I am now 25, I have gone 20 years of my life without reading these books. And hot opinion, I'm having so much fun already 100 pages into this book. I don't think it's slow. I don't think it's boring. It's providing me so much more context and information about the world, about the Shire. We spend so much more time in the Shire than we do in the movies because that's a world that I always wanted to explore more of. So I'm really treasuring the time that we have in the Shire before it gets stressful. We have haven't even met Aragorn yet. We haven't even gone to the Prancing Pony. It is just a pure delight and I'm really excited to bring you along on this journey to share updates, to share what I'm loving, and yeah, I'm just so excited for this reading vlog. I'm also annotating my book. I'm adding a couple of highlights here and there. I'm adding a couple of notes and I'm just really enjoying the book so far. So I am up to page 172 in Lord of the Rings and I read a chapter yesterday that left me flabbergasted and I went on to a deep dive on Google and Reddit to learn more about it and it was in the house of Tom Bombadil. I don't know if I'm saying his last name right but this is probably one of my most interesting chapters that I have read so far in Lord of the Rings because it introduces a character that isn't in the movies and he is such a fascinating character. In the book, they say that he is older than the trees and the rivers and he remembers a time before Sauron, which I thought was very interesting. And another scene that happened in this chapter that left me shocked was the fact that they were all sitting around, they were talking, and Tom goes to Frodo and he says, let me see the ring that you're holding. And Frodo reluctantly gives over the ring to Tom. Tom tries it on, doesn't become invisible, and takes it off and is like, here's your ring back. I don't really care for it. And I thought that was so interesting. And then moments later, Frodo's like, let me test out this ring. He puts on the ring, he becomes invisible. He begins to walk around the cottage that Tom lives in and Tom, seeing through his invisibility, looks at Frodo and goes, come back to the table, Frodo. That ring doesn't suit you when you wear it. And I was absolutely shocked that that wasn't included in the movies and I read on Reddit that people think that this chapter feels very out of place for Lord of the Rings because Tom doesn't really fit into the narrative of the story. He feels like a very old character who was in maybe prequels or in other story ideas that Tolkien had and he inserted Tom into the narrative to kind of change up the pace of the story. And I was reading and I saw a website that said the ring cannot affect Tom Bombadil because he is outside of the whole issue of power and domination. 
Tolkien uses Tom as an allegory that even intense struggle between good and evil is only part of the whole picture of existence. That is fascinating because whenever I thought about Lord of the Rings, I thought to myself, if I put on the ring, I don't think I would be as enamored by it because I don't have an intense need for power. In my opinion, I have an intense need for respect and kindness, but not necessarily power. And Tom is someone who has lived before Sauron. He knows what it's like to live such a long life. He is somewhat above the idea of power and domination, and he has other priorities in his life. So when he puts on the ring, he's not enamored by the chance of power and the chance of achieving the greatest power in the world. He is like, it's just a ring. Other people may be tempted by it, but I'm not necessarily tempted by it. But I think it is absolutely fascinating to include that in the story, and I kind of wish that they included it in the movie because I think it would have been such a wonderfully tender scene similar to that of Inglorious Bastards when they're in the basement bar where the American soldiers are dining undercover with German soldiers and one of the Americans breaks his cover and it creates a really tense scene that is so beautifully executed in a way that leaves you on the edge of your seat and it's just so wonderful and I think it would have been really cool to have that in the movies. I think it would have been a really tense scene if we just heard Tom go, let me try on that ring Frodo and silence ensues and everyone's looking at the table. We pan to every character to see them getting nervous and then we finally land on Frodo and Frodo is like, okay. He takes it off the chain that he's holding. He hands it over to Tom. It falls into his hand. Tom puts it on and maybe there's a close-up shot of Tom putting the ring onto his finger and then he takes his finger off the ring and his hand is still there because he's not invisible. Oh my god, I think it would have been such a cool scene in the movie. It would have really added some tension and also intrigue as to why Tom doesn't get affected by the ring. But I can also understand why they didn't do that because it would have left a lot of questions for the audience and I think people would have really focused and honed in on Tom rather than Frodo and they would have been like, well, if Tom isn't affected by the ring, why didn't he bring it to Mordor? Which is another question that one can ask, but I do love the idea of Tom and I think he's so so cool. That chapter just left me thinking and ruminating and theorizing and I thought it was such a cool chapter to include and while it does feel somewhat out of place to have Tom in this story because he very much feels like he should be the protagonist because he isn't tempted by the ring, I love the idea of having someone who is tempted by the ring, who does feel its pull and its influence and I think that whole entire internalized battle that Frodo has is very important to the plot. So it's really cool to see those juxtapositions between those two characters. And yeah, I'm fascinated by this book. I'm loving it so, so much. I'm 241 pages into Fellowship of the Ring and we finally met Aragorn and I'm loving it so far. The moment he entered the scene, I was like, finally. He's here. The iconic scene where he is sitting in the back of the prancing pony, he has his hood on and he's smoking, is in the book, which is really exciting. And I also noticed that they sing a lot in this book. One can argue that The Lord of the Rings should be a musical with the amount of musical numbers that are included in this story, but I am completely enjoying it. And I think I'm going to try and read to page 250 because that will leave me around halfway through the book. But it is a very slow going read. I feel like I've been reading this for a couple weeks now and I'm really taking my time with the text and I'm really enjoying every single chapter so far but I also wanted to show you a cute little thing that my brother got me and it was from like a flea market that he went to and they had these mystery hobbit little things that you would buy in vending machines and it came with a couple of things and I feel like I personally won with the two things that I received because they're two of my favorite characters. So first we have a Bilbo Baggins dog tag. Would I ever wear this? No, but don't you worry, it can become a keychain. And then it came with a temporary tattoo of Galadriel, and Galadriel is actually the character that I cosplayed as a kid when my family and I went to see The Lord of the Rings in movie theaters. So it's really fitting that I found Bilbo Baggins because I really do enjoy The Hobbit, and I also got Galadriel, which reminds me so much of my childhood. And so now I'm going to get back into Fellowship of the Ring. The Hobbits are now with Aragorn, and they are traveling towards Rivendell, and the Ringwraiths are coming after them. So I feel like an action scene is going to come 
really quickly. I am up to the part in The Lord of the Rings where Gandalf is recounting how he was captured by Saruman when he went to him for help and he was double-crossed. And he was speaking to the great eagles when he was on top of the tower and he asked them, How far can you bear me? The eagle said, Many leagues, but not to the ends of the earth. I was sent to bear tidings, not burdens. And there's two things that I really enjoy about this whole entire interaction, very short very succinct, but it closes out the whole argument that people always make that they could have ridden the eagles to Mount Doom. Clearly they couldn't have because the eagles said that they won't and they can't. But I also really enjoy the quote, I was sent to bear tidings, not burdens, because that is just something I'm probably going to quote over and over again because the eagle wants to help, but they're not here to carry on the weight of other people's burdens. And I love that quote. I think that quote is probably one of my favorite quotes so far, but I also really do enjoy that tidbit because people always made that argument that they could have taken the eagles, but clearly they couldn't have. So why do people still bring that up in a discussion? I don't understand that. One of my favorite things about the Lord of the Rings is Frodo's internal monologue because he is constantly thinking about the Shire. He is constantly being like, man, I wish I was home right now or it wouldn't be too far of a walk back home if we started walking back home right now. And he is just such a mood. He is truly me every time I leave the house. That man just wants to go home and rest and what a mood. You probably think that I'm writing some really compelling notes, 
but I just put get a job, stay away from him about Boromir to Frodo. <laughs> I finally finished the Fellowship of the Ring and I had such a great time with it. It took me a very long time to finish this book because there was so much world building and information being given to me that I had to really take my time with every single page that I read and savor each word of Tolkien and it was such a fantastic read. It opened up the world that I knew from the movies so much more. It showcased the friendship between the fellowship and how Aragorn really cares for all the people that he's supposed to protect. It showcases Sam's loyalty to Frodo and Pippin and Merry being really funny and the tension between Pippin and Merry and Gandalf is also still in the book which I really enjoyed and I just love the way that it explored friendship in such a healthy way that you don't see too often between an all man group and it was just such a fantastic read. There's one thing that I did notice that's not included in the book but is included in the movie and it's the iconic quote where Aragorn tells Frodo, I would have followed you to the end to the very fires of Mordor and he doesn't say it in the book which is wild to me because I thought he would say it in the book or at least have a variation of it but I was looking on reddit and they said that he said something kind of a little bit similar to it in the book and I might have mi just missed it but I'm really surprised that that quote is unique to the movies and not in the book because I think that scene was just very important to show that these two very important characters who have such a specific purpose in the play of this entire realm have worked together and would have worked together to go to Mount Doom but they can't and Aragorn tells Frodo that he would have gone with him to the end even though he didn't have to but he has to do other things. He has to find Merry and Pippin in the movie. So we don't have that scene in the book, but overall this book was just such a fun adventure. It was an honor to learn more about Middle Earth and finally dive into the first book in this series that I have fallen in love with when I was just a child when I first saw the movies and I finally was able to read the book. And one thing that I also realized towards the end of me reading this is that I really enjoy listening to the audiobook while I read along. I feel like I retain the information so much easier when someone's reading the story to me and I was listening to a version of the audiobook that someone recorded on Spotify and it included sound effects and background noise and it felt so immersive. So I think for the next two books when I eventually read them I'm going to listen to the audiobook while I read alongside it because I think that will increase my enjoyment of the series overall and not have me take months upon months to read this book because there's so much information because I'm not usually a fantasy person so it takes me a little bit longer to digest all the information but I'm really happy that I finally was able to read The Fellowship of the Ring. It completely lived up to the hype that I created in my mind from the movies. It was beautifully written, atmospheric, and expanded the world that I have loved so much and it was just an honor to read it and also annotate the novel. I underline key pieces pieces of world building and character information that I thought would be vital to me. I underlined my favorite quotes as well and I just had a really good time reading it. I can't believe I finally finished it. It was such a journey. This video has been maybe like a year in the making. It has taken me so long to finish this book but I did it. I did it. It is complete and I really hope you enjoyed this reading vlog. If you want to follow me anywhere else on social media to get content that you won't see here, my Instagram, threads, and TikTok are all linked down below along with a bunch of other things. If you are not subscribed to my channel, be sure to do so to see more videos from me in the future like future reading vlogs. And if you have stayed this far in the video, leave a nature emoji down below. A nature emoji of your choosing so we can see who stays for the longest in all my videos. If you do, I'm so glad you did. Thank you so much for liking, commenting, and engaging with my videos, and I will see you in a new one very soon. Bye!